So you can be sure that there is something special about the IDA S1000, S2, S2400. And of course, YouTube is full of the videos on how you create beats on the S2400. But to be fair, there are two things that I'm interested in. One is like, I believe the workflow and the interaction design, the workflow, how this thing is designed, is the real interesting thing when I'm analyzing and starting to work with the topic. But what I want to focus on today is another unique feature, which is the resampling feature. I just discovered it while exploring the machine. I thought, why am I not able to recreate or to emulate this setting, the resampling capability of what the Isla S2400 is actually doing? So let's get into it and I just show you in a short uh, second what I'm talking about and then I try to recreate the same thing with Ableton Live and Bitwig. So let's check this out. So this is what you see when you start the machine and actually let's just load a sample in there. So this is the original sample. Let's load the same sample on the second track. Let's add both samples to the same choke group. And this way we can make sure that we can hear the same sample. So the first thing I'm gonna change is we keep this as our reference, which is 16 bit. And let's, let's switch this one to the from the hi-fi machine to the classic machine, which then also changes the bit depth to 12 bits. Let's hear the difference. Okay, so you already obviously get the difference between the 12 bit reprocessing of what the machine is actually doing. But now the next thing what I wanna do is resample the same track and also add this kind of 35 RPM to 45 RPM idea. So the idea is imagine you're sampling from a uh, fast playing record and then slow it down. As the next step, we go here to the actions menu, resample the sound, pitch like 33 at 45 RPM. So we hit this enter. What is happening there? It's resampling the same sample. And what we go want to do is emulate like whether we would play a sample, a track from 45 RPM. So from the turntable and slow down to 33. And why we going to do this is because the original unit, the Emo S1200 sampler had not, of course, just a limited amount of sampling capabilities and um, sampling length. And so therefore you were always slowing down the sample pitching it down so that it had actually the proper length of the sample. But this was also a degrading of audio uh, quality. And this is what is happening here with the resampling and the pitch like 33 at 45 RPM technique. So let's do so. Begin resampling. Okay. So now to actually have the same speed, we have to pitch down this one, the resampled one. So I wonder, can we do the same thing in Ableton Live? Let's switch to the computer. For the sake of comparison, I'm just recording the S2400 into Ableton Live as a reference. The first thing what we should do now is basically putting it on a new track. If you might remember what I did on the S2400 was first of all putting it into 12-bit mode and what I how I would do this is using the Ableton Redux plugin. So we put this from 12-bit to 16-bit. <laughs> to 
to imitate the speed effect, the pitch shifting effect, we actually have to increase the speed and resample this whole thing. To get from 33 RPM to 45 and then back again, we have to improve or increase the pitch by around 5.3 semitones. So let's do five and something in between. So, okay. Something very important, it's not just this whole resampling thing uh, because the Ableton Live engine is pretty good in doing so, but actually what this resampling, the resampling magic, what is really happening on the S2400 is also that it's been rerouted through the analog filters on there. So let's emulate this as well and add another filter. And this filter should be around 12,000 kilohertz. with a little bit of drive. And here is really where you have to play and experiment a little bit with what you actually like to have. If you put this to the same group. So you see, i almost getting there. Of course, you can always hear a difference. And to be fair, I think it's more interesting to actually play around with the frequency of the auto filter and the actual drive and also the drive algorithms. Check this out. I think I now endlessly could play around to actually really match it. In this short amount of time, I think I'm not able to do so probably, but you get the idea. But now what is even more interesting is compared now to our original sample. So I just pitched up a little bit the original sample just to match it more or less, but now you get the same loudness with the final sample. But check this out, the actual, the technical decibel levels are quite lower than the original one. So check this out, this one is peaking against zero more or less because it's normalized, right? And now if you play the processed sample, You save four decibels with the same perceived loudness. Those are the tricks how you actually can improve also your loudness, um, the punch of the sample, etc. Now what you could do is, of course, you could bounce the sample, just, just bounce it uh, to a new track. And here the interesting thing is, this is our resampling pipeline. So you just basically pull in your, your sample and you just process it. And then you have actually here, check this out what was happening. If you compare this to the original one. Let's do the same thing in Bitwig. So actually in Bitwig I have available this bit 8 device and not really a bit 12 device. I'm pretty sure I could jump uh, here in the modulation effects or anything and find the setting or maybe build myself a 12 bit device. But to be fair, this is for me not really interesting. What is interesting is really to get there some crunchiness with this device. So check this out. And let's do the same here like in Ableton with the filter. So I'm not using the normal filter, but rather the filter plus plugin. And I slightly adjusted the default setting that has been loaded in here. And I, what I did is here, I uh, removed the LFO effect on the main thing, but I am having here this mode MOOC uh, ladder filter as the default. And of course here um, we can do the same thing with uh, driving a little bit the signal.
Hmm. So I'm not getting to the results very fast. Actually, it sounds very different. I'm sure the more you play around, the uh, sooner or later you get to similar results. In my opinion, I get faster there with Ableton Live and the stock plugins that are there. Check this out. But maybe it's a matter of taste, what you like more and uh, also what you prefer. And you can use the same techniques in any door, right? It's just like I wanted to show you first try the plugins I found I have here as a stock plugins and what you actually can do. So in a nutshell, it's a combination. What the S2400 is doing, it's a combination of resampling uh, through its analog filters. So there you have a focus on 12 kilohertz and a little bit of drive in there, of course. It's the resampling from 30 feet to 44 RPM. So there's a slight pitch shift increase, of course. Finally, there you have the 12 bit uh, sampling engine, which adds this kind of crunchiness. And if you have these ingredients, I think it's more interesting to actually play around with those settings and adjust it to your desire and to your needs and then you get the crunchiness and the same vibe that you get from the machine. In my opinion, the real strong feature of this machine actually is uh, the whole user experience workflow and everything you do with resampling the whole thing and adjusting the track, uh, the way how it's organized and its simplicity. But I just wanted to show you what this resampling feature actually is doing and that you can do a similar thing with your door of choice. Talk to you soon.